When we think of time, we imagine it as a linear process capable of moving forwards and only forwards. In our imagination, we can picture it shifting backwards as well. But can time move sideways? Can time move in other directions? Let's find out. In our video, does all time exist at the same time? Starting at 3, Parallel Time. Let's kick things off with an explanation of how time might move sideways and how this could mean that several periods of time might all exist at the same time. The theory of the multiverse tells us that an infinite number of parallel realities may exist alongside our own. And if this is true, and if we could travel between these realities, we could theoretically move sideways in time to another dimension. So, rather than time moving forwards from 3.01 to 3.02 p.m., for you, time would move sideways from 3.01 to 3.01 p.m. This would mean that all parallel universes are perfectly synced up, and that when you leap from one to another, you'll always end up at the same point in time. Because every single second is inextricably bonded to tick by at the same time across multiple realities. But what if it's not like that at all? What if parallel realities aren't synced up, and that traveling throughout the multiverse took you to various points in time instead? Well, if that's true, then it means that all time exists at the same time, with the past, present, and future all happening right this very moment across an infinite number of universes. At number two, all at once. Another theory on simultaneous time is that all past, present, and future events are happening now all at once. This idea does not require the existence of the multiverse, and it puts forward the prospect that even in a single universe such as ours, every period of time occurs simultaneously, but the conscious beings within experience it in the only way that makes sense to them, in chronological order. Therefore, in the same moment that the Big Bang occurred, the universe also ended. At the very same time man discovered fire, you were born, and dinosaurs were wiped out. When the moon formed 4.5 billion years ago, it did so at the precise moment when leopard print went out of style, when urinal cakes were invented, when the Simpsons stopped being funny, and when the first fish took a dump on dry land. I think you get the picture. A useful analogy would be to imagine time as a movie. Nobody watches every frame at once. Instead, you watch it pass by, in the order it has been presented to you. But the movie as a whole exists before you watch it, and it will exist as a whole after you watch it as well. Nevertheless, you're only ever experiencing one small part of the movie at any one time. And that would be true even if you sped it up to play at a thousand times its speed. This theory has been posed by many prominent physicists before, but in recent years one of the most intriguing explanations has come from Dr. Bradford Scow, an associated professor of philosophy at MIT. Scow rejects the idea of a linear analogy, such as the movie one we just proposed, and instead he describes us as living in moments which are scattered randomly across space-time. Scow believes that if we were to view our universe from a different angle somehow, we would see all these moments in time spread out and playing through all at once, as if a movie had been cut up and the frames had been thrown all over the floor. Basically, imagine Christopher Nolan's editing technique and you're halfway there. This interpretation bases its theory on an idea of a block universe, which also seems to contradict itself by saying that there's no such thing as the past and the future. Only the present exists. But the theory explains itself by claiming that the things we have experienced in the past and what we will experience in the future are the present. It's just that the present simply changes. And you know what? Now my brain hurts. So let's look at a pretty star instead. 
And number one, distant time. When you look into the night sky at the North Star, you are viewing something which is 433.8 light years away. This means it took the light from that star 433.8 years to reach you, meaning that you're seeing the North Star how it looked over four centuries ago. The way it looks today won't be apparent until that time has elapsed again. But over such a vast distance, is it really true to say that that star exists in the same today which you are experiencing here on Earth? Let's say you threw up this morning, and for some reason you want to know what happened at the same time on the surface of the North Star. How would you figure this out? Well, potentially you could follow the light emitted by your breakfast puke all the way to the North Star and calculate what happened when you vomed here on Earth. Oh, look, a coronal mass ejection took place on the surface of Polaris at the same time last night's pizza ejected itself from my face. How neato! These two events allow us to draw a line across space-time called simultaneity plane, which should let us correlate occurrences on the star with events on Earth. But it doesn't. Because if someone is traveling at a fast enough speed across this line of simultaneity near the North Star, the Earth vomiting and the coronal mass ejection we detected will not line up according to time. For this traveler, some other moment in time on the star will line up with the Earth vomiting and vice versa. Both of these perspectives are entirely valid, though, because in each instance, what you observe as having happened at the same time has only done so relative to you. You could put a thousand different observers at different points in the space between us and the North Star, and none of them would agree on which moments in time lined up between the two objects. So this means that if two people or objects do not share the same location, then the events which may seem to take place at the same time actually do not. This would be the case even over shorter distances. For example, a baby born at precisely 4 a.m. UK time in London and a baby born at 4 a.m. UK time in Sydney would seem to have been born at the same time, but they have not, because an outside observer flying past Earth with super strong X-ray vision would have seen the two babies being born at distinctly different times. So even without multiverses and the grand idea that time is simultaneous, it is clear that even two points in a normal timeline may not necessarily take place at the same time. But what are the consequences of this? And the other theories we've mentioned. If time is truly simultaneous, then what does this mean for us conscious human beings? Well, you can find out exactly what it means in our bonus video, The Harsh Realities of Simultaneous Time, which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time. You'll get to watch this, and indeed all of our bonus content which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then it's cool, we still love you. And we'll continue to provide the best content we can under YouTube's restrictions. As you'll see if you watch our recent video on the three creepiest things happening to you right now.